Hi, uh, let's welcome to part 24 of this playlist. So these are all real certification questions. Today we will look at questions around these five topics. Please hit the subscribe and the like button. Remember, this keeps me motivated to put in more content. The information I am sharing here is all gold category. Now, do not forget to refer this playlist for previous questions. Let us jump into this question. This is a loose coupling question. What is loose coupling? Loose coupling is when you do not build a hell lot of dependency on one component. For example, if you have a team and one member in the team is precious, he has built he or she because she will feel angry he or she has built a lot of knowledge and dependency on themselves then what will you call that scenario that would be tight coupling because if this guy or the girl goes on vacation the project kind of cripples to deliver products during that off time loose coupling is that I have five such people so if one falls sick i have four more to go that is when we would pray god less or we would rely on our luck less because we have five people who are very knowledgeable now let us go through options first one says loose coupling means low latency request handling it has nothing to do with your speed of internet or network etc it has nothing to do with uh, consider from an example perspective if one guy is working like super fast he's an iit and it does not matter he can still fall sick and cripple you b says it allows applications to have dependent workflows no it's actually the opposite you should have independent workflows instead of one person being a bottleneck everywhere I have split that functionality into five people so it's loose coupling so this is wrong C says it prevents cascading failures between different components which is perfectly fine because if one component fails the other component should not fail that is the whole purpose if one guy falls sick the other guys should still be able to deliver because we rely on the process and the documents and not on the brain or the brain memory of a single guy okay so c is correct d says it allows companies to focus on the physical data center operations no boss aws is not about having your own data centers aws is all about use aws data centers use aws data centers get rid of your on-prem data centers so d is cross this is the final answer now what is agility it's a english word agility what is that see if you have a team okay you have a team member and many times you see one person in the team is very agile that means that person is a rock star he works for a project suppose he's on mainframe and he's working on mainframe but he still is able to learn python and contribute in the python team he has good understanding of functional flow he's able to contribute in the test teams he participates in the cultural festivals he participates in the hackathon so every project has at least one such team member a guy or a girl who is very agile so what does that mean that means that this person takes very less time to learn certain things he takes less time to deliver certain things so in our aws world he takes less time he takes less time to acquire new resources compute resources it's agile if a website is running and there are 1 lakh customers like 100,000 customers okay and suddenly it becomes 1 million so the system is very agile to add new computer resources right that is agility this guy can do two tasks in a day this guy can also do eight tasks in a day he is agile he would never tell you I don't know Python he would not tell you I don't know Excel sheet he would not give you any reasons why a new computer resource could not be spawned 
you will not get this guy in the on-prem world you will only get this guy in the aws or the cloud world any cloud gcp azure etc see the first one says access to multiple instance types which is wrong access to multiple ec2 instances is just not agile what if this guy doesn't use it properly b says access to managed services see managed services is always better than manual services because you have you will reduce your administration effort and time but managed services usage is not agility managed services usage is one of the design best practices probably so both of these are wrong c says use consolidated billing to produce one billing see we use this so that we can leverage on the overall discounts if i have one account and it says that if you use uh, ec2 instances beyond 70 percent then you will get certain discount but if i club all departments hr finance sales etc and i club it in one bill so i will get that discount faster because i will consume that 70 percent faster at a overall account level but is that the purpose is that agility the question is asking about agility that is not agility so this is the final answer now let's look at this question see this question is very simple you want to prevent sql injection or thumb rule thumb rule thumb rule whenever you see sql injection cross site scripting you want to prevent that use waf simple waf 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 see inspector is like your police it will look if if a thief is getting in or not okay uh, waf is like you know it will prevent the theft itself Trusted advisor is it will tell you, boss, you know what? You have one security card at that gate. You should put five. But it will not prevent SQL injection. It will not prevent the thief from getting in. It will just say, boss, I am a consultant. I think you should have two security guards on each gate. But if a thief is coming, this guy is not there to prevent it. You want a guy who is there to prevent it. That is, that guy is called WAF. So this is the whole purpose of WAF. It will prevent your web application we do we have a web application in our question yes we have a web application it's saying no there's there is a website and you are putting it behind alb so it will prevent you sql injection and cross site scripting so if you do you guys usually don't rely on what i'm saying so that's why i always show a documentation because some people write like you know what in some of that website that guy told that this is wrong and since that guy is a white guy so i think he can be trusted more than an indian guy so that is called a white man's privilege that privilege works with indian girls to the core man so this would be my final answer so i'm pretty sure someone will come and say why not guard duty see guard duty will also help you with threat detection but what it does is it stops unauthorized activities like if someone is not supposed to access or the credentials are compromised so the scenarios are different, right? It, they will not help you with SQL injection, cross-site scripting. They will help you with other scenarios. Like this is a, like a security guard at your apartment gate who will tell you that, okay, can you swap your uh, apartment access card and the swap fails? Or he would or she would ask you for a token number from an app. And if you do not give that number, he will say, boss, you cannot enter, boss and it will also help you with forensics you you know there is there was a serial called cid and acp pratyuman he is kind of trying to do root cause analysis of who did the crime why so this will help you with that detection of crime like it will give you an rca of suspicious activities like who logged in when and then you can ask this guy hey why did you lock in that time now let us look at this question See, this question is very simple, you know. Uh, for example, you have Amazon.com and you want to set up a call center service. AWS has an offering for that. That offering is called AWS Connect. Now, people might say, hey, I also see a direct connect. What is that? See, direct connect is if you have on-prem and if you have cloud and you want to connect this together, then you plug direct connect here but aws connect is used to set up a customer service center and it does it with a very low cost see if you are a company for example barclays bank and you want to set it up yourself usually what people do is say hey, who would take that headache let's go to 
uh, maybe Infosys, Wipro, uh, TCS, and set up an L1, L2, L3 desk center. So you you now clients can do it themselves. So they can just leverage this service to set up that automated service. It's an omni-channel cloud contact center. So does this mean that like we can get rid of a few task force members? Yes, yes. And that's what the automation is leading to. Human beings have to be in a specialized category. If you are just receiving calls, be prepared one day your job can be automated. Like in the next three to five years, you have that time. And what does specialized mean? Where you need human beings, it's a tough job like coding, designing. Go through these certification contents, man, and switch your field because there are certain fields which are bound to be automated. So connect is the right answer, but let's look at other stuff. See, CloudFront, if you are setting up a service like Netflix, like an OTG platform, you want very little buffer times or no buffer times, very low latency. Then you use CloudFront for that, okay? Here, we are not setting up a service like Netflix. Direct Connect, I already explained that you can use it to connect your on-prem to your cloud AWS regions. And this is where Direct Connect sits. And hence, this is wrong. And last one says Trusted Advisor. It is a consultant. It will only help you improve your security posture. Always remember Trusted Advisor is to do with security. It is not to do with setting up call centers. Trusted Advisor is also about guiding you about cost optimization. It tells you, hey, you know what, you're overspending on this service. There are ways to save costs there. It will guide you with performance. You'd say, you know what, your certain EC2 instances will perform well if you put it in an auto scaling group. It will advise you with security that I already told you. It will also give you advice about, you know, service quotas when you need to exceed your service quotas and fault tolerance so that you can make your design loosely coupled so that you improve the reliability of your services. And hence, this would be my final answer. Let's look at the last question of this part. There will be many more questions coming in other parts. See, I would just blindly answer this question and I will explain you why. I'm seeing the word streaming, okay? I'm, and I'm seeing the word real time. When I see these two words, it only reminds me of Kinesis or SQS. SQS is not an option. I can see Kinesis. I will blindly go and strike this option and say this is yes. See, QuickSight. Always remember, QuickSight is to do with BI. It is a business intelligence service. Just like Tableau, Clay, Cognos, and so on. You have QuickSight, which is an Amazon AWS product, which helps you create dashboards and reports, okay? It has nothing to do with real time. So hence, I'm striking this out. This is wrong. Redshift, what does Redshift do? Redshift is never real time, man. Redshift is always about stale data. You have a data warehouse, which is stale data. The purpose is to do advanced analytics on top of it. It is wrong. Redshift is a cloud-based data warehouse solution. So you, you see this? It's used for cloud data warehouse. And what do we do with data warehouse? Conceptually, in data warehouse, we, st we store millions and zillions of data. Why do we store it? Because we want to create BI reports from it, and we want to run advanced analytics like ML routines, AI routines, and so on. So if you see this diagram, ML tools, they use Redshift. BI apps, they use Redshift, okay? It is not meant for real time. You see here, there is no real time sources as well. These are operational databases, which is never real time. These are S3 data lake and uh, data from marketplaces, third party data. But if I see Kinesis, Kinesis is all about data streams, real time. This is what we are seeing, data streams, data streams, real time. And now let's look at data pipeline. See, data pipeline is used to automate, yeah, transformation of data, movement of data. You can define data-driven workflows. Those things are possible here. 
but the main purpose is to move the data but not in a real time basis you cannot move the data in a real time basis if data pipeline is just like your usual etls it is very good for moving data to your data warehouses it is good for moving data from on premises to cloud environments it is not good for real time so there is nothing real time about this so this would be my final answer please hit the subscribe and the like button it helps me motivate myself to put in more informative contents please drop in your comments in case you are looking for some more cloud certifications materials on other certifications this brings us to the end of this part in this part we covered questions which are linked with these topics please do not forget to visit the previous parts which has previous questions so including this part there are 150 questions which are cold category questions it will help you immensely clear the certifications stay tuned for more questions see you in the next part